Hello, Paul Synthmania. Tonight we do a question that uh, people ask me all the time. Roland Juno 60 versus Roland Juno 106. <music> I get this question a lot on the YouTube channel. I get it on Facebook. I get it on um, other social media, Instagram, etc. All right, I'll give you my opinion in a nutshell. If you want to do 80s style synth pop and similar, go with the Juno 60. If you want to do more like house and techno of the 90s, go with the 106. And again, this is my opinion. Don't start writing, oh, I have a 106 and I use it for synth pop. Oh, I have a Juno 60 and I use it for house and techno or any other genre, ambient, new age, jazz, whatever you want. This is just what I've observed over the years. The two synths are extremely similar. They have a very similar sound, but they have uh, different features. So let's uh, listen to a few of the sounds compared to each other first, and then let's talk about the features. All right, again, the two synths sound very, very similar. Let's uh, take uh, an example with the strings. and a bit of organ. All right, let's uh, quickly talk about the specs. For the keyboard, both have uh, 61 keys. The polyphony, both six voice. Now, the first difference, memory banks. The Juno 60 has 56 memory banks, and the Juno 106 has 128. So more than double for the Juno 106. If you want to save a lot of patches, the 106 is the best choice. For the circuitry, they all have the same, pretty much uh, the same DCOs, VCFs, VCA, LFO, one envelope, and um, Slightly different because the Juno 60 is from 1982 and the Juno 106 is from 1984. So the components are slightly different, but pretty much is a, it's a similar sound. High pass filter, both have it. Another difference, arpeggiator. The Juno 60 has an arpeggiator. The Juno 106 does not. Portamento. The Juno 60 does not have portamento. The Juno 106 does have portamento. Chorus, they both have it, pretty similar. Both have the transpose. MIDI, big difference. The Juno 60 doesn't have MIDI, it has um, the proprietary Roland DCB interface, so you will need an interface, such as Roland one, or third-party interfaces that you can find in the market, or you can have a MIDI retrofitted. Versus the Juno 106 has MIDI from the get-go, it's built in, in, out, and through and both have the patch shift controls and the pedal hold sustain. And these are most of uh, the similarities and differences of the machines. Now, let me tell you why I think uh, the Juno 6 is better for synth pop and the Juno 106 is better for house techno. I'm not the only one, and actually I observed that during the years, I was actually there during the 80s and. Uh, 90s when um, these two keyboards were being used. And I'm sourcing this information from uh, the A to Z of uh, analog synthesizers. And uh, you're not a synth maniac uh, if you don't have these books. These are like the Bible of uh, synthesizers. And uh, I don't think actually they're for sale anymore. So Peter Forrest, please uh, do another batch. <laughs> so let's look at the um, users of the Juno 60. Bam, right from the beginning, I'm uh, singling out some of the bands here. Aha, it doesn't get much more synth pop than them. And uh, Cabaret Voltaire, China Crisis, uh, 
Vince Clark, and again, it does not get any more synth pop than Vince Clark. Then you got the Wham, John Fox, Level 42, Man at Work, Howard Jones, of course, another great proponent of uh, Juno 6 and Ju the Jupiter 8. Um, George Michael in um, Everything She Wants, Madonna in Like a Virgin, and also Cyndi Lauper used it, and uh, the Eurythmics, Swing Out Sister, The Cure, and a lot more. So definitely it's got that sound that's good for those genres and those bands. And now for the Juno 106. Again, from the start, bam, 808 state. <laughs> so again, house techno. Apollo 440, again, techno. And uh, Madonna, True Blue, this is a little bit <laughs> back, actually, this is the 80s. And then the Chemical Brothers, again, great bands from the 90s. EMF, another great band from the 90s. S Express, again, house. Incognito, Inner City, house. Uh, and um, also, again, another exception here, George Michael, I Want Your Sex. And um, Moby, Motivate, William Orbit, he used it in um, Ray of Light. And uh, Kevin Sanderson, again, doesn't get much better than that for House. The Shaman, again, great electronica. Bomb the Bass. And one of my favorite bands, T99, uses synth. Okay, let's talk about the Juno 60 and why it's great for synth pop. Answer number one, the arpeggio feature on the Juno 60. And uh, this is a great feature that uh, can be run internally with an internal sync or external sync. Let's give a quick example. Here is the arpeggiator. Just press on off here. And this is a simple arpeggio in octaves, typical of uh, 80s synth pop. This is a bass sound. And notice the sound stops when I remove my fingers. You can use the hold features to hold the arpeggio. Now the cool thing is that you can uh, connect it to an external sync and you can run it from um, other Roland units or if you have a converter, I'm using a Garfield right now, you can um, convert it from MIDI to uh, sync and you just, uh, in, you just connect this cable here to the arpeggiator sync and you can have it connected to a DAW. So in this case, we're gonna use the same bass line from the Juno 60 and drums from the DAW and um, maybe a pad and a little synthesizer line with the uh, Juno 106 and this is what uh, you get. Okay, pretty cool already, but there's more. Again, the arpeggiator on the Juno 6 is very versatile. Basically, you only need to find a way to sync it to a modern uh, recording setup. Uh, you can use the old units like I do, like the Roland and the Garfield, but you can also use uh, more modern units like, um, like a Canton or similar. And so we don't have to stop there with the bass line. We can use the arpeggiator 
to play also some melodic uh, rhythms and uh, I set it to up and three octave um, on the arpeggiator and uh, this is what you get for example So then you can layer this accompaniment on top of uh, the song, just like they used to do in the 80s. Uh, they used to write a sync code, usually on uh, track 24 of uh, the recording device, uh, the, the tape, and um, everything was slaved to that. So we're going to record this little ditty here onto the song and maybe add some uh, echoes and choruses. And uh, this is what happens. Now let's talk about the Juno 106 and why it's a cool machine to have for house and techno. Alrighty, here we have the Juno 106 and here are the reasons why this was used a lot in house and techno in the 90s. Reason number one, it has built-in MIDI, in, out, through. So back in the day, people still use MIDI separate from audio to drive their keyboards. So having MIDI on board was um, just a lot easier than having to deal with uh, interfaces like on the Juno 60. Number two, it's got the portamento, the portamento feature that allows you to emulate uh, acid lines. Another great feature was the monophonic mode that you can uh, engage by pressing the poly section together. And that allowed you to create a really large sound and monophonic bass lines or lead lines. Overall, the Juno 106 has a more forward, upfront sound than the Juno 60. The Juno 60 has a warmer, older sound, more related to the Jupiter 4, 8 uh, of the early 80s. And uh, the Juno 106 is a little bit more modern, more mid-range, and a little bit more versatile. Let's listen to a few of uh, the sounds that you can get on this machine. Let's start with um, just a simple square pulse modulated with the, by the LFO. As you can hear, it, it's already in uh, techno territory, but you can um, enter monophonic mode and um, this will shake the wall. So I'm gonna bring the volume down just a tad because, and this is what you get. Also, you can um, use the portamento, so engage the portamento 
and uh, you can kind of simulate acid lines or techno lines. You can play with the filters and um, come up with uh, bases, lead lines. It can add more waveforms here. Put some sub and get some really deep bass. Let's go back to the polyphonic mode. Let's build a bass for house. And here in this range, you get the typical house bass that was used in the 90s. You can also remove the chorus. You can get great leads too. Let's enter monophonic mode and let's add the portamento here. Okay, let's make a quick ditty using a few sounds. Okay, the first sound that we're gonna use is the, this bass here, and we're gonna sequence it in the 16th. Something like this, you know, of course when it's sequenced, it's gonna be tight. And then um, as I'm playing it via MIDI in, I'm gonna modulate, uh, uh, the oscillator with uh, with the LFO, such as like this. And perhaps also opening and closing the resonance controls. So this is what's gonna sound once it's sequenced. Okay, another sound that we can do in um, unison in uh, mono mode with the portamento is this kind of um, percussive uh, techno pluck, such as this. And of course, we're gonna sequence it so it's tight, and we're gonna add some uh, reverb and delay as well. And it's gonna sound like this. And we can do one more uh, techno sound, uh, something like a Who is Elvis type of sound such as this. And 
and then we're gonna sequence it and put um, some effects to it so it sounds like this okay now let's add all the components together and let's add some uh, drums from uh, the doll and uh, here's the finished techno track done with the Juno 106 All right, a few quick words of conclusion here. These are synthesizers. You don't have to use them for synth pop or house and techno. These are just ideas. You can use the Juno 60 and Juno 106 to play anything. Polka, merengue, salsa, reggae, ska, whatever you want, right? But um, they do shine in these two applications, in my opinion. As always, thank you very much for watching the videos. Please like this video, share this video, comment below, and if you have any ideas for next videos, please let me know also in the comments, and I will try to make it happen. Thank you, see you at the next video.